myself dr v h mankar head of department electronics and telecommunication government polytechnic nagpur today i will take the topic phase lock loop pll the learning outcome of this topic is after completing this topic students will be able to describe working of operating principle block diagram of phase lock loop state the applications of pll so let us see the phase lock loop it was first developed in 1930 since then it is used in communication system of different types particularly in satellite communication system before the invention of ic pll systems were very complex and costly now pll ics are fabricated at a very low cost many applications such as fm demodulator stereo demodulators tone detectors frequency synthesizers etc now let us see the block diagram of phase lock loop phase lock loop essentially consists of a closed loop system which has different parts such as phase detector low pass filter error amplifier and voltage controlled oscillator this vco is a very important part of this pll the vco is a free running multi vibrator which operates at a set frequency fo called free running frequency this frequency is determined by an external timing capacitor and external resistor which are connected to this vco that determines the free running frequency so depending on the values of r and c the free running frequency of a vco is decided and when some vc voltage is applied to vco this frequency free running frequency will be shifted either to the positive side or to the negative side and there will be change in the free running frequency and that's why this is known as voltage controlled oscillator so its oscillation depends on the voltage this control voltage which is applied so depending on the magnitude and its uh, polarity we can say there will be a shift in the free running frequency now let's say some input signal vs is applied to the phase detector with a certain set frequency fs as this input signal vs of frequency fs is applied to the pll the phase detector which is set also set to be a mixer it detects or it compares the phase and frequency of incoming signal to that of the output of this vco means this vo voltage which is running at fo voltage so essentially the phase detector will compare this vs with vo which is having a frequency of fs and fo if the two signals differ in frequency and or phase an error voltage ve is generated this error voltage which is generated is applied to the low pass filter you can say the phase detector is basically a multiplier and produces two frequencies that is sum and difference frequency that is fs plus minus fo so there will be two uh, frequencies one will be addition one and another will be a subtraction one so naturally the addition frequency will be more than the sub difference frequencies so as we know the low pass filter its job is to attenuate the high frequency and to allow the low frequency to pass so depending on that this sum frequency fs plus fo will be rejected and fs minus fo will be allowed to pass through this low pass filter so depending on the fs and fo or fs minus fo the error uh, voltage is generated <coughs> and this error voltage is applied as a control voltage to this vco now so now there will be a race between these frequencies so depending on the error voltage this frequency fo will be shifted in such a way that there this difference will try to reduce this difference between this will try to reduce so we can say once this action starts we say the signal is in the capture range the vco continues to change the frequency till the output frequency is exactly same as the input signal frequency the circuit is said to be then locked once locked the output frequency of vco is identical to fs except for a finite phase difference phi this phase difference phi generates a corrective control voltage vc 
to shift the vco frequency from fo to fs and thereby maintain the log once logged the pll tracks the frequency changes of the input signal thus pll goes through three different stages that is number 1 free running when no input is applied then it is a go it goes in a capture range and then in a lock or tracking range so we observe three type three stages that is free running capture and lock range now let us see we have a question what are the possible applications of pll may i suggest you to pause this video for a time and jot it down what are the different possible applications you can think of once you have written it once you feel that you have write it down you can play the video yes you have very well judged the various applications of pll are frequency modulation stereo decoders fm demodulation networks for fm operation frequency synthesis that provides multiple of a reference signal frequency also it is used in motor speed controls tracking filters used in frequency shift keying decoders for demodulation of carrier frequencies now let us see the pll transfer characteristics it has a very unique transfer characteristic that we observe that we can say there is a hysteresis in this transfer characteristics so in order to understand this we need to see when we are applying certain voltage from lower frequency to higher frequency similarly when it is going from higher frequency to lower frequency so we'll try to understand the pll transfer characteristics so what do we observe when we try to apply the frequency from lower to higher let us see how it behaves so what do we see this arrow shows us that when the frequency is applied from lower to higher we say before capturing the range one this free running this vco will run at a free running frequency as it is running at a free running frequency no error voltage is generated once it comes in a capture range it just shoots out to the negative side and at certain frequency fo the error voltage is generated as soon as the error voltage is generated the control voltage will try to change the frequency of a free running um, vco so that it will try to reduce the difference between input signal and the free running frequency and thereby this error voltage will now try to reduce at this frequency you can say the input input frequency and the free running frequency are same suppose again there is increase in frequency now positive error voltage is generated this is going to happen till it reaches certain frequency f2 after which the pll uh, comes out of the lock or we can say it comes out of the lock at certain frequency and now the vco runs at a free running frequency and that's why there is no error voltage so this is what the phenomena we are observing when we are going from lower frequency towards a higher frequency now let us assume we are decreasing the frequency means from higher frequency to lower frequency so when we are decreasing from a higher frequency to a lower frequency in this arrow direction it will not respond the pll will not respond till certain frequency f3 at certain frequency f3 when it comes in a capture range there is a shoot in the error voltage and this error voltage generator rate will produce the control voltage and which will change the frequency of oscillation in such a way that the frequency and phase difference between input and vco will try to reduce thereby the error voltage is now decreasing as we increase the frequency the error voltage is reducing and reducing at this fo frequency both the frequencies are same means totally the pll is locked and both the frequencies are same again if we are decreasing the frequency now the error voltage will change its polarity and it will go towards a negative and thereby this error voltage will try to make the control voltage in such a way that this free running frequency will be shifted and again 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 till it reaches a certain frequency f4 at which the pll comes out of the lock and 
automatically the vco free running free, vco will run at a free running frequency 